My name is Kat and I'm the children's librarian here at the Tewksbury Public Library. Welcome to this week's Art Not Craft video, where every week we take a look at a different artistic medium and see if it's something we want to play around with. Today we're going to be learning about ink. Ink has been around for thousands of years. It's just a permanent dye, not always black, although that is the most traditional color that you'll find that makes a mark on a piece of paper or a piece of fabric or anything else. It is permanent. Make sure that you don't get it on your clothes because it will stain. I'm gonna take my sweater off just in case. Ink is actually my favorite uh, artistic medium and I don't usually show you my own artwork, but I will a little bit later. Today, we're going to be talking about ink in a bottle that you can buy. It comes with a little dropper here and ink regular old pens. You can also get fancy inkwell pens, quill pens, uh, fountain pens. There's all kinds of different drawing materials you can use. There's all different ways you can do ink. You can do different colors. You can use alcohol ink, which is really neat. Uh, we're not gonna do that today because there is a lot to explore and we have limited time. So today we're just gonna be talking about pen drawing and ink painting. I'm just going to be using a regular old pen here. I like this one because the ink flows really smoothly. You can use whatever you have on hand. And this is just regular old scrap paper that I had laying around. Now, of course, you can use ink to just doodle in class or on your calendar or when you're on the phone, just for the fun of it. That's totally fine. But if you wanna get a little more detailed, there are different ways that we have of using ink to color in different shapes. Of course, you can just kind of do little circles, scribbles. This is called multi-directional. If you do all circles, that's called scumbling. We talked about that a bit with our pencil episode. And it's easy enough this way to kind of get the ink wherever you want it. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. But sometimes you want something a little bit different. So, there is also hatching. So we're gonna make this corner the darkest. And so you, the lines are really close together. The farther up you go, the farther apart they are. And you can see the shading based on how far apart the lines are. And you can go back, you can go over it, add a few in here and there, but you can tell that this is the dark corner and this is the light corner. It's just easy to do that way. Now, if you move in more than one direction, so this is hatching, we're gonna do the same basic thing, but then move in the opposite direction, the perpendicular direction there, and that is cross hatching. And you can just go back and forth whichever ways you want, but going in two different directions give you a little bit more control over what you have going on there. And you can see again that it's moving from the dark corner to the light corner. Now, another way which is very popular and looks really awesome, but takes a really long time, is to use little dots. This is called stippling. Um, you'll see this in a lot of various artwork where they will use different colors all together, which is always really neat to see and they kind of blend. So you could use a green, but also put some yellow dots in there, put some blue dots in there and really get your shading that way. This one, since we're just using the one color, it just depends on how close together the dots are. And this can take a really, really long time, but it can also look really, really great when you're done. So this is more one when you have a nice leisurely day and a lot of time to work on it. But just the same, you can still see how it goes from the dark corner to the light corner. These are just a bunch of different options. Now, if we were going to do some different shapes, I have some spheres that I drew here using these already. So this one is, as you see, multi-directional. It's kind of scribbling around, going in every which way. And of course, the light is the shiny spot there. That's where the light is shining, so the shadow is underneath. This one, again, is hatching. All of these lines are going in the same direction. They're closer together at the bottom. They're farther apart or non-existent at the shiny spot. You can kind of tell. Of course, we have cross hatching, which is going in two different directions. 
same basic idea, more down at the bottom, less up at the top. And then pointillism or stippling, where this is all made of little tiny dots, more at that part, more in the shadow, because the shadow is going to be the darkest thing that you draw there. And you can really make anything work with any of these styles. I tend to use the multi-directional most just because I think it's fun. Before we move on, I want to show you one more thing. We're gonna draw a cube. All right, we are going to draw a cube using one point perspective. So I'm gonna put a point right back here. And then we're gonna use a straight edge to connect the corner to the dot. There we go. And then we're gonna use the same straight edge to move this corner to the dot. Okay. And then we're gonna use the same straight edge to move the third corner to the dot. We don't have to do the fourth corner because it is in the back and we can't see it. But this is how to do a cube so that it looks real. Now, if you're gonna do the side, you want the side to be parallel to the front edge so we can do it right there. And then we want the top, the back edge, to be the same as the front edge. So we're gonna do that parallel as well. There we go. We have a 3D cube. Now, I am gonna do some cross hatching on this side, some regular hatching on this side. And then since we know that the light is coming this way because that's where the shine is, where the lightest part is, the shadow is gonna be in the front and on the side. There we go. I know sometimes the easiest way is to draw two squares and connect them. And you can absolutely do that. But then it's clear. So unless you're making ice cubes, you might wanna try it this way. It also helps you get the angles correct, which is really hard to do. And keeping the lines, the vertical lines and the horizontal lines parallel is the most important part for making it look realistic. If you're using a bottle of ink, you probably wanna get some paper that's a little bit thicker because much like watercolor, this will bleed through and kind of warp your paper because it's gonna be really, really wet. I have a little cup here and I'm gonna put a few drops of ink in here. It just comes with a little eyedropper. There we go. And I am also going to put a little bit of water in here. The more water you put in, of course, the thinner your ink will be. I have my brush at a point, which is traditional for ink painting because you can do a thin line, you can do a thick line, you can see how it flows across the page. Um, anything that you like, the more water you put, the thinner your ink will be. So a lot of people use these to do a nice background here. This is kind of looking like mountains to me, why not? and then they'll draw the foreground image up front in a darker ink. We'll see how that looks. If you use ink straight out of the bottle, again, being very careful to lay the wet cap on something that won't stain like a paper towel, it's gonna be really, really dark the ink right out of the bottle is just the darkest black that you can get. And it makes a nice contrast in the front here. Honestly, I don't usually use water when I, when I paint with ink. I do to clean my brushes, of course, but I tend to just use black and white. And I'll show you what I mean. This is one of my paintings. It's actually a copy of one of my paintings of a turtle. 
and I did paint the background green and yellow, which I think looks really pretty, but you'll notice that there's no shades of gray. This is either a black line or a white space. There are no shades of gray. I tend to really like the way that this looks. They call this positive negative space because it's either there or it's not there. This is very binary artwork. There are no shades of gray. I just kind of think it looks really neat. Of course, you can do whatever you want with your ink painting, but that's just the way that I tend to like it. I'm gonna do my best to draw I'm going to dry off my brush here and we're going to just use the black. Let's see if we can't draw a panda bear. Now if you look online for Sumi ink painting, that is the Chinese ink painting, they will use a brush with a pointed end like this and solid ink, uh, usually an ink stick that you can change how dark it is. And they have some really, really beautiful drawings. Uh, way beyond my skill level for something that I am doing in 45 seconds. And we'll see how this turns out. Especially since I am doing it upside down. I'm sure you'll figure out what I'm making here. I figured what should we do that is just black and white? How about a panda bear? His nose down at the bottom here. And these are just real simple lines. You can get the idea of something, the curve of something without having to draw the entire shape. You just have, there we go, the side of something. We should probably put a little bit more in here. We'll get the back of the bear. We'll get the side of the face. But you'll see, this is all just black and white. There are no shades of gray here. Now, if I was going to spend a lot of time on this, I would probably do it in pencil first and see what looks right to me. I probably wouldn't outline the entire face, but that's okay. This is our artwork and it can look however we want it to. We'll give him some bamboo which is start thick at the bottom and then move up a little bit thinner, kind of like a letter I. There's some leaves on the bamboo. A friend of mine taught me how to do this a very long time ago, so apologies to her if I have messed this up. But this is generally what you do. You just use your ink, and again, you can use your diluted ink if you like, but I tend to like it just black and white. This isn't as diluted as it could be, so you can't really see the difference as well. But just strokes, the harder you push, the darker the line, the lighter you pull up, the smaller the line, and it gives you that little point there. And you can just go ahead and paint whatever you like. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had fun. Remember, if you get yourself a notebook and doodle with pen, you can bring it anywhere. And if you're painting with a bottle of ink, it dries really, really fast. So make sure that you clean your brushes as soon as you're done, because it is no fun trying to unclump a brush that has dried ink in the middle. Just keep rinsing them until it runs clear. We hope you had fun today and are inspired to make some artwork of your own. You can follow us here on YouTube for lots of other craft and story tutorials and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tooksbury L-I-B. Have a wonderful day.